Verse 41, And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hand. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. So these Jews were having their own little charismatic church service out in the wilderness. Exactly what's going on and exactly what we see today. Uh, <coughs> what most of these church doers go today. Uh, there's a church called Bribi here. And when they opened their, their big building, they, they made an ark of the covenant and they made a bunch of idols and they walked around in the church with them. And exactly what happened at the bottom of Mount Sinai, these, these charismatics are doing. These wicked charismatics today. Verse 42, And then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me of course, here Stephen is quoting Moses, but he's also touching on the book of Jeremiah here. If you if you read Jeremiah 19, 3, it's just a few chapters back here. Nineteen three. Uh, sorry, 1913, 13, 13. And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as a place of Tophet because of the houses upon whose roofs they have burned incense unto the host of heaven and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. So here we got the host of heaven as well here in Jeremiah. They're worshiping. In Acts 7.43, Yeah, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Rephraim. Remphan. Remphan. Figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond, beyond Babylon. So Stephen is actually warning them for worshiping the stars with their astrology and practices. The star, this star of Rephraim is actually on the Israeli flag. You got three, two triangles. You got one triangle is coming down, and the other triangle is going up, which makes that six pointed star. That's the, the sons of God meeting with the daughters of man. You see that? The star of Raphim on the Israeli flag. That are flying in a lot of these churches. So most of these charismatic churches. Now fly this 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 god of Raphaim. The, the Russia worshiping this god through this flag, through this ensign. <coughs> uh, 
as above, so below. And it also forms a 666 because you get six points, you get six triangles. You look at that thing, and there's a hexagram there, a six-sided hexagram. It also forms a six, and it's flying in most of the churches today, right at the front. Your God, Ramphan, Ramphan. Verse 44, our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. The tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen which also our fathers came after, brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. Which also our fathers that came after brought in Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drove, drave out before the face of your fathers. Who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for God, for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. Oh, by the way, do you know that the house of David, which is actually where the temple was, not on the Temple Mount, we talked about last week. The house of David, in the ruins, there was no, there was no Star of David markings. None of whatsoever. You know the, on the, what's on this Israeli flag? There's no Star of David markings whatsoever. But there is indeed a swastika. Yeah, there's a swastika there, which is an old uh, Hindu god, probably from one of uh, uh, Solomon's wives, one of his Indian wives. Probably the belly dance form got him to put the swastika on the temple. So that's very interesting. There's no star of David on the temple of David in the ruins. <coughs> and they call the Israeli flag uh, the star of David. Verse 48. How be it, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. How be it, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. What did that say? The Most High dwelleth not in temples made God's not in the church buildings. All these pastors building the church buildings. Oh, come, come and meet Jesus here. The Holy Ghost is here. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Yeah, these three are one. So if the Holy Ghost is here, they're saying Jesus is here, and they're saying God is here in, in, their, in, their, in their church buildings. It's a lie. We see it right here. The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. All these pastors want to build these big churches, bring you in to get your money. God's not in there. God here is telling you he's not in here. And later on, Paul confirms this later in Acts, which we'll get into in another study. Paul confirms this, that the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. He's not in those buildings. God is more sitting here right with us right now with this book than any church building in Petamedible this morning. Okay, this is about uh, going to church. And uh, where do you go to church? And do you go to church? And I think it's a good time to get this church thing out because uh, a lot of things are going on that uh, uh, in the churches. So do you go to church? Now I'm hearing this more and more when I meet someone and I give them a gospel track. And when I give somebody a track, I hear this all the time. Uh, they usually ask, where's your church? Where's my church? Or where do you go to church? Uh, let's see an example. Uh, let me let me show you guys an example here. Let's see. Let's see. This is we're making imaginary line here. This is the door to the church. Now, to uh, here's the door of the church. I, I wore my best clothes, my Sunday best that a lot of pastors say you should wear because you're going there and you're meeting God, right? And uh, go there, wear a Sunday best, a tie, maybe a suit. Here's the door of the church, I'm outside. I'm still, you know, oh, nice girl over there, you know. Anyhow, I'm going to church, and as soon as I step in that building, get on this side of the door, I'm holy. 
I'm, I'm, I'm a brother in Christ. Uh, I'm, I'm your brother, and uh, uh, you know I'm all dressed and I'm dressed to please God. And, and what happens after I finish worshiping or whatever I do in that building, that building which is non-scriptural, we're going to see that way. After an hour or two hour service, I step back out of the door. Even though I've got my suit and tie on, I'm the same old rotten sinner I was when I first went in that building. So we are in church. You don't step through a doorway to go to church. We are the church. We are his temple. So I'm just going to give you one main example. Oh, there are thousands. You know, you pretend, you know, even though there's thousands. And, and, and it's a guy named Sam Gipp. I'm going to show you a little clip of him here. A guy named Sam Gipp. And he runs a ministry called A Friend to the Churches. And he just did a sermon called It's Still Church on March 9th. He came up with a multiple, came up with multiple reasons using someone else's material, some, some brochure he found in, in the foyer. channel. Let's hear how he introduces himself. All right, you may be seated. Play in. Can we say? Anything else? Well, hey man, it's always good to be in church, guys. Always good to be in church. Hey, uh, good to be in church. Nobody's taking. And they're uh, using someone to come up with all these multiple reasons why. You should go to church. It's still church, the, the sermon's called on YouTube. And uh, why we should all go to a local church. He also made that statement, a local church. And wear our Sunday best, you know, when we do monkey suit and tie. Where's that in the scriptures? I mean, this is just a replacement for the robes the Catholics are wearing. That's right, in these Baptist churches too, exactly. By the way, there's also no local church in the scriptures, and if there was, uh, why, why are you broadcasting your sermons over the whole world? Hmm? Which is the real church, where the believers are, instead of keeping it at your local church building, which is what 99% of these pastors clearly cover and worship is their local church building. Now, they need their fancy suits just like the Pope and his priests, but always leave their shoes on in their holy buildings. Also just like the Catholics do in their church, right, the priests? So if God and the Holy Ghost really shows up in their holy buildings like they claim, and you're going to hear them claim this, you'll hear Sam, you'll hear all these guys claim this, why are their shoes still on? Do they err not knowing the scriptures and the power of God? They enlarge the borders of their garments. Yeah, but these suits... They're enlarging the borders of their garments. And they sit in the chief seats. They sit above the people. Okay, just a short little video here. I want to show you this, uh, this Mr. Mr. David Brown. It says, Brother David Brown teaches at James Knox uh, Church, the Delan uh, Bible Church in, in, uh, in Florida. And that says here, he's teaching on the most basic and important question, why do we come to church on Sunday? This was... Uh, Published September, September 23rd, 2018. It was put online. It's a live sermon, so I wasn't able to copy it. But we'll see what he says here. You're gonna, you're gonna hear just like somebody else. Yes, you'll be saved this morning. You'll be in church this morning. Amen. Excellent. So good to be saved this morning. Good to be in church this morning. Amen. And everyone amens him. So, like we're gonna talk about in a bit. <coughs> you cross over that line. You're in church. You step out of the door, you're out of church? No, no, no. We're in church 24 hours a day. We're the body of Christ, true Bible believers. Up there in that pulpit, right? Up there in that podium. So they, they uh, sit in the chief seats above the people, not heeding to God's warning not to do that. Why not take their shoes off? Which God said also to do if you, th you think you're building so holy. Let's go to Matthew 23, 5 and 6. Matthew 23, 5 and 6.
but all their works they do for to be seen of men. Isn't that why they wear the suits and ties? Yes, to be seen of men. And Sam Giffey even say in this little video clip there, uh, yeah, well, when I first got saved, there's a, a, an older guy and he's in a nice fancy suit and, and, and that made me feel really welcome, you know, and... and God just says here, verse 5, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. We're not supposed to do it to be seen of men. They make broad their philanthropies and enlarge the borders of their garments, which is exactly what a monkey suit does. And love the uppermost rooms at the feast and the chief seats in the synagogues. And don't say that a Baptist church building is not a synagogue. It's a synagogue. You're going there to worship God, right? It's a synagogue. It's a synagogue. So, uh, you guys, you all speak Hebrew and Greek here. Say you do. You learn it in your schools. You learn it in your, in your, your theological seminaries. And come on now. Uh, Now, uh, I want to go to another scripture here, and that's Acts 7.33. Let's go to Acts 7.33. Acts 7.33. 7.33. And said the Lord to him, Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. So, if they're building so holy, yeah, this is the house of God. Yeah, they all say that too. And they say they're men of God, right? So if they're so holy and their house is so holy, why aren't they taking the shoes off? They're on holy ground, right? That's what they claim. So, oh, and one other church group uh, I just rebuked recently is the Bible Baptist Church of the Land, Florida. That's James Knox is the pastor there. James is a really good teacher, and I believe he's my brother in Christ. But they recently did a teaching, why we go to church on Sunday, claiming that they were rightly dividing the word of truth doing so. You can find my rebuke right now if you go on their Facebook page, the Bible Baptist Church, Deland, Florida, uh, which I posted on February, I think it's 13th or 19th. In the reviews, I give them a good review, but I also posted this. I said this, very good teachings here, but to spend $2 million on an Antichrist worship center, this group has indeed fallen away. If you are pre-trib, if you're truly pre-trib, guys, why build such an expensive Antichrist worship center? Most languages, including Dutch, Sarang Tango, French, Portuguese, and many, many others, don't even have a King James Bible in their tongue. It'll cost approximately $2 million, what you guys are going to spend on this building, to fulfill this commission, which the Lord commanded us to do. Are you guys ashamed of Jesus Christ, who's the Word, the King James Bible? You guys must be praying the Lord won't come back anytime soon to make such, such a foolish move. Yeah, they're building a $2 million church. And James Knox was kind of bragging, yeah, we got $620,000 in the kitty. I don't know where it came from because he doesn't ask for money, he says. And if God provides, then he's going to build a church building. Why spend $2 million on a church building when people don't even have the word of God? And you guys are so King, J King James only. Yeah, I am too. It is the pure, pure, pure word of God. Why not get it into other languages? Use that money. I don't want your money. Don't send it to me. If you want my help, I'll help you translate. Free. Pro bono. I don't charge anything for the word of God. And I certainly don't take money from the saints. 
All my ministry is free. All the tracks we make and pass out, all free. In all the different languages. We have over 40 different languages we pass out tracks in, 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 in many different countries. Now, I'm not doing that to brag on myself. It's just free. It's something you want to do. It's the Spirit of God puts that in you. God will give, God will give, give, give someone the shoes off your feet. They don't have shoes. God will buy you a new pair. You don't trust God. You don't believe asking you shall receive? Of course you would do. You got, you got the right book. The pure, perfect, pure words of God. The King James Bible. Preserved. He'll, 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 he'll provide your needs. So. <clears throat> so these guys want to build this expensive building creating debt. And even if they get all the money and they build the building, they're going to create debt. There's going to be cost overruns. There's going to be service, maintenance fees. Bigger building, bigger power bills, bigger heating bills, bigger uh, air, air uh, 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 water bills, uh, you know. But if you really believe in the in the, in the pre-trib rapture, isn't the isn't the antichrist about to show his face? Are we not about to get to be caught up in the air? Are we not going to get caught up? You're leaving this expensive building behind as an antichrist worship center? Are you kidding me? <coughs> Instead of helping to get Bibles, the King James Pure Perfect Word of God translated into most languages on earth, which still don't have a King James Bible in their tongue to teach them the true perfect preserved words of God. Sure, God can write the, uh, His commandments in their hearts, but they don't have the pure perfect words. And we've been entrusted for 400 years in the English language with God's pure perfect word. What have we done about it? There's all these false translations all over the world. Portuguese don't have it. Uh, Sarang Tango definitely doesn't have it. Uh, German, uh, well, some German has most of it, uh, but certainly not in the one Martin Luther translated. That that's a son, a son of the gods, and it's also uh, uh, Isaiah fourteen twelve is, is uh, uh, oh morning star how it thou fall from heaven. Yes, Martin Luther is a corrupt translation. Dutch don't have it. Dutch definitely don't have it. I've done lots of teaching. You can check my YouTube channel. Look at uh, words God's words for the Dutch speaking people. And I've done at least 14 videos on that already. The Dutch do not have God's Word. They don't have a King James Bible yet. And you guys are building these big, massive buildings. And you know Jesus is, is coming at any moment? Deuteronomy 32.6. I want you to go to Deuteronomy 32.6 with me for a moment here. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32.6. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Friends, the King James Bible, this book, teaches we are the church. We are the body of Christ, his temple. We are much better off teaching and preaching in the wilderness and not some debt building to creating debt. Absolutely not. <laughs> now the Catechism teaches, the second emphasis, emphasis of the Catechism centers on the role of the local church. This local church stuff comes from the Catechism. It's not Baptist. Well, you can, all these Baptist church buildings are only a couple hundred years old. So uh, the Catechism also says, here the role of the pastors and elders as well as the goal of the Sunday school program, program, programming, should be further and support these efforts should be to further and support these efforts at catechism ideally being in the home so so wow even that catechism admits that that teaching ought to begin in the home yet leads you to a local church but i'll save that for another teaching because that gets pretty deep now let's look at the scriptures let's look at the scriptures here of which none say go to church as we are the body of believers living people serving a living God not a temple made with hands Catholics and daughters of the whore teacher you must have a building to worship in or a local church so what did Stephen say about this again that's at Acts 7 48 and 49 go to Acts 7 48 and 49 7, 48, 49. Albeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. So that comes also from the old OT, right? Albeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Albeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. 
Now, 49 is, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. So, what house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is thy place of rest? So why did God make uh, these waterfalls you keep seeing uh, behind me? And the nature teachings that, that you see in my videos. Uh, why did you, God make all this, this beautiful nature? To teach us something, right? So where do you get really close to the Lord? Why forsake the places I show you? That don't ask you for money? Where you learn from God and not man? I don't ask anybody money. I don't want anybody's money. I just want to please the Lord. Church buildings will look down on you if you walk in all dirty, stinky, and raggy. Try it sometime if you don't believe me. Try it. If you're a true Bible believer, put on some raggedy, old, dirty, filthy, smelly clothes and go into one of these church buildings and watch what happens. Just watch what happens. They will sit you in the back of the building if they let you in. And I've seen... Pentecostal pastors, I've seen pastors and other denominations actually ask people to leave that came to the to the church doors and ask for food. All they're asking for food, and some of them even wanted to come in. They were asked to leave. That's right. So they respect persons, and usually they respect the highest tithers. Tithers. You know what? I was asked to preach many times in church buildings before I was even saved. I was unsaved, asked to preach in church buildings because I was a big tither. I look rich. I wanted to, you know, maybe if I tithe, you know, God will forgive me some of my sins when I was stupid, not reading this book, not deep into this book. Today, wherever you may be watching us from, from our church to your home, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas because it is Christmas here. A couple of uh, our people in our church come and share what they shared earlier today in our service because I feel it will be a blessing to your home. I've known Rob for pretty close to 18 years now, and uh, and uh, he's uh, visiting us through this Christmas season here at the church, and he was sharing a testimony with us uh, today about what God did in his life through the church, and you know what? I wanted you to come up, Rob, and I want you to share it with our, our viewing audience out there to show how God really does hear our prayers and how he heals. So, Rob, would you come up at this time and share that testimony? with our TV audience. Good morning. My name is Robert and I'm here with my family from South America, from the jungles of the Amazon. And, uh, uh, it's a little bit cooler up here, but uh, that's okay. We, we, we're, we'll make it. Uh, and I just want to tell you a little bit about something that happened about 13 years ago. Is, is We were coming uh, uh, to this church and uh, uh, we were getting ready for church, but the evening before I had had a lot of pain in, 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 in my lower abdomen. I didn't know what it was, and uh, uh, in the morning when we were getting ready for church, I collapsed, and the pain was so intense, I felt this warm feeling like my appendix had burst, and it was just, it was awful, I couldn't stand, I was in, in, in horrible, excruciating pain, and I said to my wife, you either got to get an ambulance or get me to the hospital, I said, I, said, I can't make it, and uh, my wife came, and she grabbed me, and she, she, she helped me up, and, and, and we hobbled up to the car, and uh, and on the, way to, on the way to the hospital, we were going to the hospital, she said, are you sure you want to go to the hospital, Rob? Uh, maybe you want to uh, uh, just stop at the church? And, and in my agony, I said, yeah, okay, let's just stop at the church, just in case, just stop at the church. And so we got out, and she helped me out of the car, and we came into the church. The service hadn't started here yet, but Pastor Don and a couple of deacons were here, and, and they saw my wife kind of dragging me in the building, and, and uh, they run up, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I said, I don't know, I think my appendix is burst, I'm going to the hospital. Well, let's pray, pray about it, Don says. And the elders and Don prayed over me, and I tell you, the Spirit of God fell on me, and, and all the pain was gone, and, 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 and my body was just glorified, it was just such a wonderful feeling. And I've never looked back, I don't know what it was, I've never gone to a doctor to find out what it was, it doesn't matter what it was, Jesus healed me. And he's in this building, and I just want you guys to know that, that... Uh, 13 years ago this happened here, and he's, he's healed us a lot more ways than one. He's healed us financially. He healed, he's healed my family financially. We were taken down to a point where we had $5,000 a month in debts, and, and we didn't have any income to pay it, and people were just coming and, and, and robbing us. 
And, and, and God took us down, but he'll never take you down too far. He took us down just enough to, to teach us, to, to, to raise us up again. And I tell you, we've been blessed more than blessings could, 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 you could ever imagine. Like the floodgates of heaven open and bless our family so much since. And I just thank Jesus for it all. Thanks, guys. Amen. Thank you, Rob. You know, it's good to be able to hear what God is doing in people's lives. Sometimes I believe testimonies are the greatest things that we can hear or, uh, just what God is doing in their lives. And you know what? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God heals. We're not believing every word of this book, certainly. And I looked rich. of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. <laughs> 